The Independent National Electoral Commission, ANEC, on Sunday ruled out any fresh governorship election in Bias State as requested by the All Progressive Congress APC. ANEC's Director of Voter Education and Publicity, Ulu Wali Osaze Uzi, in an interview in Abuja, dismissed the APC's demand for a fresh governorship poll in Bias State. He said the Commission on Friday concluded it work, its work on the Bias State governorship poll. The APC National Chairman Adam Soshomale had in a later dated February 14, 2020, an address to the INEC Chairman Mahmoud Yakubu called for a fresh election in Bielsa State. The National Chairman said the swearing-in of the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Doye Diri, as the state governor was unconstitutional as he did not meet the mandatory constitutional requirements. But in their swift reactions, the PDP and the River State Governor Yesam Wike dismissed the APC National Chairman's claim and insisted that Diri would be inaugurated. After a meeting of its top management on Friday, INEC at a press conference confirmed that Diri met the constitutional requirements. Plus TV Africa spoke with Barista Emeka Wankwo. The Supreme Court, there's a legal jury that said that uh, the Supreme Court is, is, fine, is not final because they are infallible, but that they are infallible because they are final. You understand what I'm yes. saying? Uh, with respect to this issue of viral judgment, there are lots of inconsistencies in the I must commend that there are lots of inconsistencies in the judgment of the, of the Supreme Court. And it didn't just start today. You remember the issue of uh, the 1979 election. Uh, Chief Awolowo challenged the election of Shagari. And there was an issue. He insisted that they have to go to the electoral, uh, electoral college because he did not, uh, that uh, the MPN did not meet the, the two-third requirement. They went to the Supreme Court. And that decision was equally very, very, uh, what is the two-thirds of uh, how many states then? Was it two-thirds of 19 states or, or then? It was a, it was, a, it was a big issue at that particular period in time. Yes. You understand? But the Supreme Court resolved it one way or the other, and there was, a, and there was peace. You understand? But this, the recent Supreme Court decisions that I'm seeing, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's very, very inconsistent. So I wonder, uh, because we must follow precedents. In law, they teach us that there's something some they call the doctrine of stare decisis. You follow precedents. If the Supreme Court sets precedent on the same set of facts, the courts under, under the Supreme Court, the inferior courts, must follow that pattern, that trend of argument. You understand? And if you check in, uh, let, me st let me start with, uh, I think in 1999, the governor, the deputy governor of Bauchi State, the deputy governor of Bauchi State, his nomination, or some, uh, his nomination was nullified. But it didn't affect uh, Adamu Muazu, because still continued as the governor of, uh, of, uh, of Bauchi State. There was no issue, of, uh, there was no issue of, uh, that it was a joint ticket. Continued as the governor of, uh, of Bauchi State. Yes. Adamu Muazu eventually became the chairman of, uh, of, uh, of PDP, if I'm, uh, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm correct. You, you, you understand? And uh, I think the whole problem started with the judgment of the Supreme Court in the case of Rotimi Amechi. Rotimi Amechi was not, his name was not on the ballot, but the Supreme Court ruled that it is, uh, the votes are cast for the parties and not the candidates. Okay. And on the strength of that, Rotimi Amechi was, uh, was declared the, uh, the governor. Still on the matter, I have with me in the studio a Plus TV Africa producer and a social commentator, Ekene Ezeji. Thank you for staying with us. It's a pleasure to still be here. <laughs> What's your perspective on all of this, taking into cognizance what the um, respondents have said? Well, he, he snatched the words out of my mouth at the last, you know, because I was perusing yeah. with you before we came back on, that somehow people are, the confidence we, the people have in the system is waning rapidly with all these controversial judgments of the Supreme Court. Some have argued that the fact that they did it, that the timing is also crucial. Why wait till the eve of the inauguration to swap? You know, a gazumping. You basically take it from the person who is practically enthroned and give it to uh, his opponent. 
And, and then, you know, you also made the statement earlier that it looks like a tit for tat because maybe they feel they're being objective or just now because in, in the state of, in the case of Imo State, they gave it to APC now. In the, ca in the case of Bielsa, yeah, that, That's giving... actually the party's position. Yes. yes. No, but it may appear. They may think yeah. they're playing to the gallery on that one, but we don't... They, they're not selling us uh, something we can swallow here. Um, I'm glad he referenced the case of Ruti Miyamichi. You know, why would you argue on that one premise that it's okay to transfer the votes to the party? And now, why not do the same in this case? You know, because the people like you were saying to me, the will of the people was that they were voting for um, APC. Why are you now not going ahead and flowing with that will and saying, okay, maybe his, his, um, his, his, all his documents were not in order. He seems to be falsifying his identity here and there. So let's disqualify him, but let's still accrue the votes given to him under the ambit of or the umbrella of APC. Let's just give it to the party. Why are you choosing to disqualify it on this occasion? Um, as is always, there will be reactions to any Supreme Court ruling, depending on what side of the divide you're on. But the question that a lot of persons are also asking is the place of the will of the people yes. in this matter. Yes. Do you see any likelihood? INEC has ruled that out already. The APC is calling for a review. But is there a possibility that the move by Ihe Dioha, currently the court has accepted that they're going to take a look at the case and see if they, were, they are going to review it. If that sets a precedent, will this continue? in consideration wow. for the people. That's work. an interesting question. It's like a slippery slope. You know, it's a lose-lose, it's a as some say, but you have to look at the, the lesser loss, <laughs> so to speak. I think, you know, he, he made the statement at the beginning, Barristo um, Wankwo, that the Supreme Court are not infallible um, because they're the last uh, court, or rather the last point of appeal. They're, because they're the last point of appeal, that's why they need to be infallible. So there's a call on them to be seen to be um, I don't know, responsible in a way that is above board. So right now, that reputation is already tarnished somewhat. But it might endear people to them if they then say, OK, look, we were considering this set of things. But because of the people's response, we're going back to respond, review the situation again. It wouldn't again. That open a floodgate. Of course it would. Of course it would. But they then now have to measure to what extent they can now narrow, you know, shut the dam up. But I think it would at least endear people to them you know, yes, it would open up the floodgates, that's the, that's the risk, but they need to now look ahead and say, okay, if we agree it in this case, let's put something in place to sort of reference as our precedent to say, this is why we did it in this case, but it doesn't mean we'll do it in every other case. Well, let's uh, see what happens <laughs> going forward. Thank you very much for your thoughts on the news. My pleasure.